Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to learn about the function node and the run script node. Both allows you to write JavaScript code, but in two different contexts. The function node allows you to manipulate the message object and run JavaScript code in the robot context. The run script node executes JavaScript code within the context of the browser on the open page. So let's start with the run script node. First, add an inject node and then rename it to start. After that, add an open browser node. Then add an open link node following the open browser node. Let's go to google.com to write some JavaScript code. When you run the flow, the browser will start and it will open the Google page. Now here, if you press F12, you will see the developer console. In this developer console pane, any JavaScript code you write will be executed on this page. So this is very powerful. You can manipulate the web page. Let's try something fun here and try to change the Google logo in this page. Click the source code to focus this pane and then press Control F to open the search bar. And here you can search with a CSS selector or an XPath. Let's write an XPath first. So this alt attribute seems unique enough for our selector. We are searching for an image element with an alt attribute equal to the text Google. And as you can see, this selector returns one image element. This is perfect for us to target this element from our JavaScript code. But for our code, we will actually need a CSS selector and not an XPath. The method we will use targets this element using only a CSS selector. A CSS selector looks similar, even simpler to write. Let's remove the XPath components from the query and convert it into a CSS selector. And here is the CSS selector equivalent of the XPath. Let's now copy this and then switch to the console tab. Here we will use the document.querySelector method and paste our CSS selector as a parameter. You can find more info for this method from the video details. The dev console may not allow pasting for security purposes. To proceed, first enter allow pasting into the console and then you can paste the CSS selector. Let's try this again. And as you can see, the document.query selector with the correct CSS selector returns the image element. Now let's store this return value in a variable named elm. And when you print elm, you can see the DOM element displayed. So we want to change the logo on the page. Let's find an old Google logo. We can search on Google, but better do this in another tab. In the Wikipedia page, we can find the old Google logos. Here we can use this one. But this is a page. Let's right click to the image here and open the image URL. Here is our Google logo URL. Return to the console. Now, if we add this value to the LM variable's source set attribute as an array item, we should be able to update the image. As you can see, we have successfully updated the web page. Now let's try this from RunScript. Let's add a run script node here after the open link node, then double click the run script node to open the editor. And let's copy the code we have here. And then copy the other line. Save it and then close the editor. Stop the previously running flow 
then run it again with the updates. As you can see, the image has changed because the JavaScript code executed on this page from the run script node. So let's now close this page and return back to the flow designer. This was an example to manipulate the web page. With the run script node, we can also retrieve and return scrape data from the web page. So let's try this in another web page. This time we will navigate to another page to scrape data with JavaScript and return it from the run script node. Let's set the open link node URL to quotes.toscrape.com and then run the flow. So in this page, you can see a list of quotes. Open the dev console. Let's say we need to scrape all these quotes from the page. First of all, let's inspect the text here. We have a span element here with a class attribute equal to text that we can use to target. The CSS selector will be simply class equals text. Now this looks like a reliable selector and it returned all 10 quote elements from the page. So we can proceed with this CSS selector. This time we can't use the document.query selector because it is only for a single element. Let's allow pasting again here. We can try using the query selector first, but you can't use double quotes both outside and inside like this. So let's change this to single quotes. This only returned one element. We should use the query selector all method since it returns all matching elements. Let's store this in elements variable. And now we have all the elements. So we can try to get the first element indexed by zero and then use the inner text attribute to get the quote. We want to retrieve all the text values from the array returned by query selector all. However, the node list array contains DOM elements that cannot be returned from run script. Instead, we need to find a way to return an array of quote strings from the run script node. You can only return pure JavaScript types like integers, strings, objects, or arrays from RunScript. We need a method to retrieve the inner text attribute of elements returned by the query selector all method. We can use the map method to apply this operation to each element and return the results as another array. Let's try, but this will throw an error. The map method exists only in an actual array object in JavaScript. However, here we have a node list object. We can create an array from a node list using array.from and then apply the map method to this array. As you can see, array.from returns an array object. And by applying the map method on it, we have created a new array by returning the inner text attribute of each element. There is also a shortcut for this using what is called the spread operator. Place the elements inside brackets, prefixed by three dots. This is more simpler or clearer way to write this code. We can now return this array of strings from RunScript. Let's copy this code and return to the RunScript editor to paste it. And then copy the next line. Let's copy this one. As the output of this is an array of strings, we can just return it as is from the run script node. This is another difference between the function node and the run script node is that in a function node, you must return the message object. While in run script, you have to return the data and not the message object. Let's save the code, connect the run script to the open link node, and then add a debug node afterward to observe the returned data. Now the question is, if we are just returning the data from the run script node, where is it stored? 
In the run script properties, there's an output variable where the value returned from the run script is stored. Let's name this quotes and then run the flow. After the run script node was executed, it successfully returned the quotes array, as we can see from the debug output. Now let's continue with the function node. The function node is used solely for manipulating flow variables and the message object. Let's start again by first adding an inject node, then adding an input box to receive input from the user. Let's set the title as name, or better, ask name, and the text as, what is your name? The user response will be stored in message.text, but let's change it to message.name. Let's also add a debug node here to observe the output of the input box node and run the flow. And here is our input box waiting for an answer. Let's write Jane. And as you can see, the response is stored in message.name. So how can we use this? We can put a function node here. And with the function node, we can use or update the message object. Here, we can split strings into words, trim white space, replace specific words, join multiple strings, and compute various values like word length or count. So we can do anything with pure JavaScript here. The main difference with the JavaScript code written in a RunScript node is this JavaScript code runs in the robot context and not in a browser context. So for instance, we cannot use document.querySelector and expect it to work because there is no page and no browser context here. We can only write JavaScript code here to use or update flow variables. So let's try a very simple example and add a greet property to the message object passed here. Start the string with hello and append the message.name value to the hello string. Finally, end the string with a question, how can I help you? Save the code and close the editor. Now when the function node runs, we will have a greet property in the message object. We were able to do this with the JavaScript code written here. Let's now continue by adding a message box node after the function node to display our greeting message. Let's call the title greetings and for the text, we will use message.greet value. We can stop our flow after the message box node completion and also change the inject node name to start and then run the flow. We have successfully created a dynamic greeting message with the function node and displayed it. In JavaScript, concatenating strings with plus and double quotes is less efficient and harder to read. Another option here is backticks, known as template literals, which allow for easier string interpolation and multi-line strings. With backticks, we don't need plus and double quotes for concatenation. Instead, we can embed variables directly within the string. And for the variables inside the string, you can use dollar sign and curly braces. And this is much easier to read. Let's copy this, then save the code and close the editor. And then run the flow. As you can see, we get the same output. Now here we have also another option. We have shown this in previous videos. You don't need to use a function node for simple one-liner operations. Instead, we have a JavaScript scope for input properties. So for one-liner operations, you don't need to add another node.
you can just write this one-liner JavaScript code within the JavaScript scope for the input. If you run this flow again, we should see the same output that was generated by the function node. But here the difference is that the flow has become simpler. So in this video, we have learned the difference between the function node and the run script node. Both allowed us to write JavaScript each for a different purpose. The function node allows you to manipulate the message object and runs in the robot's context. And the run script node enables you to write JavaScript to manipulate an open web page as it operates within the browser context. The function node cannot run browser JavaScript code because there is no browser context and it must always return a message object. In contrast, the run script node may or may not return data extracted from the web page, but it never returns a message object. Thank you for watching.